Hello, we're back here again. We're somewhere completely different now on Curse Farm. So um, previously we've been uh, with the chickens, we've seen the horses. Today we're gonna to do a little bit of something different. We're actually gonna do some stable management. Um, so the horses have actually gone out from here. So we had Ted, um, my friend's really, 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 really big horse. Um, he won't actually fit in any of our stables. So we've had to commandeer the cow barn. Um, so it's quite a large, big, airy barn um, that we've kind of, he, we've put the straw down on this side and obviously he's walked around and he's pooped over that side. Um, but what we need to do, because obviously he's gone out now, we need to actually make sure that the stable is good for him to come back into. So it's really nice and clean. So what we're going to do is go through a little bit of stable management. So we've got our brush, we've got our fork. Um, we could probably do with the poop scoopers as well, but I've left that over the other side, so we'll worry about that in a minute um, because we're going to clean out this. So the idea is that um, the straw, so this is all straw on the ground. There's a little bit of hay back there um, purely because he was too big to fit his head through the round feeder. So he had it on the, on the floor. So what we want to do is we want to separate the dry from the wet. So what I'm doing, I'm just kind of skimming along the top and I'm just picking it up. So the idea is that the dry will come up and the wet will stay down. So you can see there's the darker stuff, that's the wet stuff. And I'm just lifting it up And probably because I've done this for so many, so many years, I can do it quite quickly. Some people can't. Um, and you kind of, you get a bit of a feel for where it's wet and where it's dry. And the wet is often quite a lot heavier. So we've actually got a poo here as well. So we want to just keep that back. Um, and we'll just go through here. So you can feel the difference with the fork. It's, um, it's a bit lighter and then the, the wet is obviously heavier. Uh, it's also a different colour as well. So I'm just going to keep pushing this back across. So I think Nathan is coming with the wheelbarrow because um, I left that the other side as well. So all this is, that's all dry. So we can kind of see, it's actually not that much wet, which is surprising. Um, so this stuff here is wet. So you can actually see it's, it's a different colour. And basically what we use is we use the straw because the straw actually absorbs it. Uh, find a nice bit here. So the straw is quite a lot different than hay. So straw is actually hollow. Although this has been flattened, it's actually hollow. And the idea is that the the liquid, so the, the, the urine basically goes inside that. Um, and it's actually soaked up by the by the straw because it's quite um, hollow. So it, the water goes in or fluids go inside, soaks it up and then stops it standing on the ground. So if it's standing on the ground, it's not so good for the horse because they're going to be standing in it. Um, whereas what we've done is we've got the straw, um, which ideally, the way to test it, I don't know if this is going to be thick enough, I'm just going to make it a bit thicker because he's sp spread it around. So you want to have the straw and you want to just have your fork and you want to hear that kind of boing. If you hear that's not thick enough straw, so you know that on those areas, you need more straw. If you do that before you put the horse in, you always know that you've got plenty of straw on the ground. Um, if you don't have that kind of bounce, then uh, the straw isn't going to absorb it and you're going to need twice as much straw to actually absorb any of the urine and basically keep the health of the horse and kind of make stable management a lot easier. So here, I know that there's a lot of wet because I can see it. Um, so Nathan, if you want to bring the wheelbarrow over, just stick my mask on again. Do you want it around that side or this side? Uh, whichever, it doesn't matter. I'll put it in wherever it goes. So the idea is that all this kind of pooey, wet stuff, we actually take out because if it stays in here for too long, it actually builds up ammonia. Um, what we do do is we actually deep litter, which means that we, um, we don't skip, we don't, dig it out, sorry, this is what we call digging it out. So you don't dig it out every single day, um, purely because if you dig it out every day, then you're gonna have a harder base for the horses. So you're gonna use more straw to keep the, the kind of the cushion, so that bounce in the straw. Um, and it also means that you risk uh, injury with the horses. So if you don't have that kind of real good bounce in your straw and you don't have that covered everywhere, then actually when they lie down, they're going to cap the hock. So they're going to um, 
graze their elbows if you like, or their knees for the horses. Um, whereas what we would say is capped hocks uh, in kind of equestrian terms. So I just kind of come across over here. So this bit here, there's a lot of yuck in there. Um, I can actually show you some hay now as well. So we've got hay here. It's not very nice stuff. That's not the best example, but you can see the difference between hay and straw. So this is hay. It's obviously looking a bit, a bit dull now, but it was nice hay, so it's a lot finer. And this is the straw. So it's the straw, you can also see the eaves, ears of the corn, um, whereas the, the hay is basically just grass. So you can see, that's quite, quite fluky. You can see that the ears of the grass are completely different from the ears of the corn and the size of them, there's a, a vast difference. This is for eating, this is for bedding. Um, so what we would do is each day we basically skip it out. So we take the poos out and that's what we do every single day. Um, normally it wouldn't be with a fork because that's a bit of a, a harder way to do it. Um, but we would dig it out probably once or twice a week. Um, maybe, maybe twice a week in this stable because it's quite a lot larger. And then we just put it all onto the muck heap. So what we'll do is we'll just fill it up a little bit more. And what we might do is we might follow Nathan around the corner just a little bit, but then we'll actually, uh, well, we'll just see him go out around there. And what we'll do is we'll call it quits for a minute here because I want to be able to show you the sheepies. So Nathan's going off with the wheelbarrow. And so we'll stop here um, for a minute because it does get a bit boring when I'm just shoveling poop. <laughs> um, so what we'll do is we'll come back to you in the studio for a few songs and we'll go and see the sheep in a minute. Hey, so we're back in with the sheepies now. Um, so I'm just giving Martha a bit of a fuss. So this is Martha. She's one of our, our oldest sheep. Um, she doesn't normally like fuss, but as you can see, they've all been sheared or shorn or trimmed, basically. They've had a haircut. Um, they did have somewhat of a mullet before, but actually now they look quite nice. Um, so Carl, who shorn, sheared them, shorn them, um, he actually left them with kind of like a big haircut. <laughs> And Arlo's just bumping into Alex, sorry. Um, so he left them with it like a bit of a, a funny haircut, really, um, which is now gone. So we've got Bessie, which is this one, which was looking at you with a white face. We have Arlo to the right, who is always nosy, always nosy. He's our only half boy, um, as is Bessie is just very nosy too. This is Spludge. So Spludge is Spludge because she's got a black splotch on her neck and her twin sister Ellie, which is the one here, black face, that doesn't want to talk to us. And we have Libby who is at the back. So Libby Lamb is at the back. Um, Libby was a little bit, a bit special when she was younger, so we've got a Libby Lamb. And then this grumpy one is Martha, obviously, that we've seen. Um, Martha is quite enjoying having an ear scratch, actually, which is surprising. And then obviously Arlo again. Yes, Arlo, you always have to be front and centre. Um, so Arlo, you can still see, is rather rotund. Um, all of this is, <laughs> is huge. And this is after he's lost weight. Um, so the sheep came in because they were actually overweight. So it's not good for them to be overweight, just like for us. Um, but they were really overweight. So, oh, Martha's wanting to scratch. He's just pouring me. Um, they're very demanding, these sheep, I have to say. So Martha is here wanting an ear scratch and Arlo is wanting a bum scratch. So multitasking whilst filming, never work with children and animals and all that. Um, so they came in because they were quite overweight and they just needed to lose a bit of weight for their health, really. Um, <laughs> Arlo's really enjoying it. So when he enjoys it, he licks, licks and licks and licks. Hey, Martha. <laughs> This is comical. I'm itching two bums and sheep and being rubbed into. Thanks, Martha. Um, so, yeah, they were they're very overweight. They actually need to come in to lose some weight for their health, um, for their feet as well, because if they get too overweight, then it puts more pressure on the feet. Um, their feet splay and they kind of have different foot problems. And obviously, um, they have conformation problems as well. So Arlo, um, a few years ago, he actually... I don't know if you can see this, but Martha's kicking me. She's pouring me with her front foot to get some fuss. Um, Arlo, this one, actually had some problems with his front legs. 
he actually had um, a lot of uh, kind of knee problems and he needed a lot of support. And at one point we thought we were going to actually have to put him down. Boo, he doesn't want kisses. Um, we thought we were going to have to put him down because he couldn't walk properly. Um, he was just walking on his knees. So it's even more important for him not to be so overweight. Arlo, stop eating so much. Um, the other girls are looking quite good, actually. They're still a little bit on the rotund side, but they're actually looking a lot better than, um, than Arlo. Arlo, bless him, is somewhat big. <laughs> um, the other thing I wanted to show you in here was that actually this is what the, the other stable should look like. So you can see there's like a bit of a darker area here, um, which is where we've actually cleaned the bedding out. Um, and the darker kind of wetter bed has actually left a bit of a stain on the concrete, but that's nothing that a pressure washer won't get up. So we've got the clean straw over this side. Obviously, it's got a lot of fleece in it. Um, the sheep were shorn and Carl put the fleece just the other side of this gate, as you can see. Um, but what the sheep actually decided to do was get into, the, into that paddock or that side and actually pull their fleece out. So um, we were joking that they must have been cold to try and get their jumpers back on again. Um, obviously, they didn't get it on, but now the fleece is it's kind of not worth very much, really. You come and say hi, Bessie. And there's not many sheep that are this friendly. So they are, they were obviously all orphan sheep, um, which we were raised from a bottle. <laughs> I'm being sandwiched. Um, but they are very, very friendly, apart from Martha. She can be a bit grumpy, aren't you, Marthy? Oh, oh, is it nice? So you can see with her back leg, it's tickling because she's tickling her back leg. Oh, I'm saying you're grumpy. You're actually quite friendly, aren't you? Just like to have it on your terms, which I guess is just a sheep, really. We all, all are the same, aren't we? We like things on our own terms. <laughs> And Boris just doesn't seem bothered at all by the sheep, and the sheep aren't bothered about Boris, really. Arlo, you're very nosy. So, yeah, that's kind of kind of it for today, really. Um, I just wanted to show you the sheepies in touch base, because we've not seen them for a while. So maybe we, we just sit quiet with sheep and dog and listen to the munch for a minute. <laughs>